Hi and welcome to the digital job site where the boards are straight, the weather is great, and there really is a board stretcher. In this tutorial I'd like to cover the steps that uh, I use sometimes to do rafter layout, planning work, to get the angles and dimensions, etc. for creating a rafter pattern like the one shown in the scene here and use that for uh, actually cutting rafters. And previously I did a video tutorial that was called The Rafter You're After and the focus of that tutorial was essentially making a model of a rafter to be used in a SketchUp model whereas this time I'd like to focus more on using SketchUp to determine the angles and lengths for a rafter that could be transferred to wood and actually cut out and this is a substitute of the time-tested methods of framing squares, construction calculators, and rafter tables and it uh, ends up with the same results however you can do more if there's other angles you'd like to determine or every other measurements once you've created the rafter model or the pattern rafter in SketchUp you can always go back and measure an unusual dimension if there's a need for it on your project and I used framing squares and the various traditional tools for this work for years but really like the features of SketchUp you can kind of do the math and planning ahead of time take that information to the job site and, and just lay out a pattern and start cutting and know that everything is going to work the first time it's kind of a fun step and uh, can simplify it by letting SketchUp do all the math so to get started, I'm going to turn off the shadows here so the drawing moves a little better and I've just created this little scene here uh, showing a rafter pattern and uh, the pattern includes all the standard features, a plum cut, a bird's mouth, rafter tail, uh, the bird's mouth has a seat cut and the plum cut on it. I actually even put little handles on here to uh, represent the way the pattern's used. In this case I drew this up as 2 by 8s and um, so it's pretty simple how to how to get this stuff set up to uh, create this pattern and then uh, end up with a roof just a standard gable frame with common rafters and the rafters here have you can see how the bird's mouth fits neatly on the plate little overhang on there and that allows for an inch and a half ridge board in there so these all all this can be created with SketchUp uh, quite easily actually so I'm just going to erase a bunch of this stuff and we'll just kind of start over so you can follow along and adapt this to the project you're working on I'm just going to hide all this stuff for now in case we want to come back to it so anyways, with that background, uh, the way, a way I like to start out is uh, for a gable, I'm just going to draw a rectangle that will re represent the end wall of the structure that we'd be putting a gable on. And I'm going to make it an odd dimension just to show the uh, benefits of SketchUp. Sometimes it's easy to do, easier to do this sort of thing if it's an easy, easy even dimension like 12 feet or 16 feet. So I just chose seven, 17 foot 9 there for no particular reason. And we'll just make this wall 8 feet tall. All I'm doing is drawing a rectangle that uh, will represent a gable and wall. Just stretch this thing out here. Let's go 25 feet. And so we've got a problem there because I didn't move the hidden geometry. So I'm going to have to go back a step, a couple steps here. I'm just going to move our new rect our rectangle out of the way so it doesn't interfere with any of the hidden geometry. I could have done that a little smooth, more smoothly, but there you have it. Nevertheless, I'm just going to make this 25 feet long to say just assume this structure is going to be 17 foot 9 by 
25 feet long. I think that's what they made that. Yeah. So that would be a, a structure. And just for grins, I'm going to offset this by 0.5 inches and then offset that by three and a half inches. And I'll just push this out. That didn't work like I wanted it to. I'm just going to push this down. So this kind of gives you the idea of a of a three and three and a half inch frame wall, two by four wall with half inch sheeting on the outside of it. And then we're just going to group all this geometry so it doesn't get mixed up as we move along. Just going to group that, put it out of the way. Okay, so if the structure you're working on, you can put, you would put in whatever dimensions you're working with. The, the important one at this point is going to be the overall span of the gable, which in this case we made 17 feet 9 inches. And now I'm just going to put a drawing plane on here. This gives us something to work and lay out lines on, which is a, a pretty uh, simple way to make this sort of thing work out. Next, I'm going to go and put a guideline at the center of the building, assuming that our gable is going to be equal on each side, same pitch, same run. And with those two things, all I'm doing is showing a way to put the uh, do the layout work for a rafter. Another thing I'm going to do here is just create a guideline on the inside edge of that wall plate. Now you can see where that line sticks out. So this guideline is four inches in from the outside and I'm going to set up our rafter so that the bird's mouth has a full four inches of bearing and that's a debatable amount. Uh, it's nice to do if you can. It's not essential. You can have whatever amount of bearing you want on your rafter, but four inches isn't a bad amount. So now I'm going to enter the roof pitch. And again, I'm going to make this a, I'm making a rather odd pitch. I'm just going to go 712. This could be whatever you'd like. You can enter it as an angle or a pitch. A pitch, just use a colon. This will give you a 712 pitch. So this dotted line now is at a 712 pitch to our top plates. And for this, I'm just going to assume that a 2x8 would work for a good rafter. There, a good rafter size there again. If you're doing a smaller or larger structure, you might need to use a, an engineer's table to de determine what the correct sizing of lumber is. But in this case, I'm just going to make it seven and a quarter inches. So now I have two lines that are parallel at a 712 pitch. Give my computer a second to catch up here. I thought I wanted materials. Anyways, um, so I'm going to erase this guideline, get it out of the way. And in this case, I'm going to assume we're using a 12 inch overhang. Just going to take a horizontal line out here, 12 inches. And now it's simple enough to just trace this set of guidelines. I'm following around the top plate and the wall sheathing creates a bird's mouth. So now I have an outline that looks like a rafter. I'm going to get rid of all this geometry, so I'm just holding down the shift key, selecting everything that gets in the way and deleting it. That inverts the selection. Get rid of the rest of these guidelines. And at this point, it's pretty easy to see that we're well on our way to creating a rafter pattern. I'm going to stop the video here and then pick it up in another session.